Okay, so <clears throat> that should be good. Yeah, can you use everything okay now? Yeah. Yes. Good. I didn't realize we got to have the Bible going. Yeah, the mic is very sensitive. Yeah, uh, in part, I used to think, uh, I guess the only thing different with this is looking at how in part appears to be a synonym for not just for doctrine, but for the church itself. Because the church is the custodian of the Word of God. So uh, I guess in that sense, it doesn't surprise me to see God... What do you mean in the first watch and the second watch? Well, that's a whole other uh, topic, right? I think yeah, I... Yeah, it is, but I always forgot about that topic. I just... Uh... I was reading the Bible, and he says, if I come in the first watch and then the second watch, and I yeah. forgot what that meant. Yeah, we'll have to try and re uh, review that. Uh, it's been a while since I, I think I, I, I might have a study on that. I remember looking at that, but we'll have to come back to it. <clears throat> but, uh, what, what, huh? I'm sorry, what, what, um, where is that at? That, that scripture there. And so what, the Johns, I think? John? I yeah. believe so. I got to look at it when I do. I'll look at John, one of them, too. Okay, anyway, it's the first watch. Okay, I'll just write that down. And I'll look huh. first. How do you spell the first watch? Oh, how do you spell the watch? Is it W-A-T-C-H? Yes. Because first watch is not coming up in my uh, in my search here even huh official come is it in the scripture? If, first watch in the scripture? yeah yeah but it might not be written as such first watch let me see oh, yeah, something it's birdie. Yeah, birdie. yeah hang on a second uh in the new testament you watch therefore watch and remember you therefore watch or something the third watch luke chapter 12 38 what what yeah. did you what did you say it might be Michael and, and Mark or Matthew? Uh, I said one of the Luke's or John's. I see in Luke, and if he shall come, Luke chapter twelve thirty eight. If he shall come in a second watch, or come in a third watch and find them so blessed are those servants. Yeah, uh, you know, and and the important thing again is to make sure that we search the Bible for the definition. You know, right. We don't want to automatically assume or try to put words in uh, in God's mouth and then try to come up with our own uh, understanding of it. Now, yeah, I'm surprised that I wonder if Chris is using that as the first, second tribulation. Oh, really? When did he do that? I don't know. I would be surprised if he's not trying to tie that into it somehow yeah i mean i i really don't listen to chris mccann so i that's I, why i'm just you know basically just speaking in figure of language here when, when it comes to him i think he's done uh, some things that are similar to that I, I i haven't heard any studies regarding this but but going back to the uh, end part uh, something interesting lord willing i think i, I want to try and and share in 1 Corinthians 13, 9, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. And then in verse 10, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which was in part, which is in part, shall be done away. I think the, the one thing that attracted me here, or uh, the phrase done away, it's translated destroyed for the most part. And that makes sense. Because what happens, well, first of all, what, is it, what does it mean? During tribulation, we're looking through a glass darkly. Yeah, what does it mean that when that which is perfect has come? Uh, is this talking That's about the... the revelation of Christ. Right, right. But I think most people would probably look at that as the, the very last day. The coming yeah, of Christ. Yeah, they, they misunderstand that. Right, so that which is perfect, I think, is uh, tying into the... Uh, the revelation, separation of wheat and tares. And what happens during this time? That which is in part, that's the church. That's the church with all of its uh, doctrine, uh, 
hermeneutic or whatever you want to call it, I think God, Lord willing, is tying the two together. So they, they become one. So you really can't separate doctrine from the church itself, which is why I think, uh, you know, this uh, would make sense. So that which is in part, that is the body of Christ. We see uh, that verse you just referenced in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, for now we see through a glass darkly. And I thought it was also interesting in James 1, 23, the only uh, double uh, uh, comparison of the Strong's, the glass darkly is translated natural glass or face in a glass. Face in a glass. Well, that I think is also the tied. Natural body, the natural man. Right, the natural man, the, the unsaved church, uh, Babylon. So it's not talking about one specific individual, which is uh, how I think we may have understood that. But really referring to the body of Christ, that's the man. That's the man, right? But of that day and hour knoweth no man. So when God, I think, is talking about the man, uh, he is looking at corporately the institution, the body of Christ, that's referred to as a man. But you know that verse, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven. So it's just God, I think, repeating the same thing again, using the word man, and then now he goes on to elaborate. Well, the man is the, the angels which are in heaven. That would be the messengers, the body of Christ again. Even the son, neither the son, I think is a reference to the body of Christ. Okay, so looking at Numbers 27, 4, why should the name of our Father be done away? So when you start going through the Bible, try to pick up the, the context and, and looking at some of these phrases to be done away. And I guess practically in every every reference that I've been able to find so far. For the former, yeah, the former. Right, right. It, it's a reference to the uh, God's judgment on the church. So the name of our Father, well, that's, that's God, that's the name of Christ, which is also identified with the body of Christ. And like you said, uh, well, actually going down to uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 7, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away? What does that even mean? The glory was to be done away. What wasn't Moses? Uh, I, I think the the setting here is that he he saw God, right? Or he saw the face of God, and his face shone like the sun uh, when he came down the mountain. So he saw the glory of God, but yet that glory appears to be something temporal, right? The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Yeah, so can you see how God here appears to be uh, referencing the glory of God, the name of God, seeing through a glass darkly, all things that are temporal that would eventually pass away. As a matter of fact, while I'm saying that, another verse is coming to mind um, about passing away. Hmm. I think a very good verse, Lord willing, that, that might tie into that, so I'll probably come back to it. Um, all right, so the glory of his countenance was to be done away. In Haggai 2, verse 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. What is the former? The former house. The corporate body. The corporate body, right? The former thing shall not be remembered, nor come into mind corporate body. So the glory of the latter house, the latter house, I think, uh, representing the the revelation of Jerusalem. Christ, Jerusalem above. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. So all these things, I think we can trace them back uh, through history uh, with the nation of Israel. But can you see how apparently all these are the language, historical parables, they culminate they take, um, they, they, they find, they, they, I guess you could say they finalize with the church coming into the Great Tribulation, which is the former house, 
and then the redemption of the body. The redemption of the body becomes this house or the current house that we're looking at. So it shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts, and in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Second Corinthians 3, verse 11. For if that which is done away was glorious, that also makes me think of Solomon, right? Remember how God is always talking about Solomon's glory or the glory of Solomon? But then yet at the same time, we read about the falling away of Solomon. Isn't that interesting? The fact that he had uh, he multiplied wives and and he ended up uh, what well, you know God using him as a type of the body of Christ, the corporate body. But prior to the fall away or the falling away, uh, Solomon. We read quite a bit about Solomon, right? The house that he built, the glory of Solomon, and and so on. So when God is talking about glory, I believe he can still be referencing the body of Christ. Now, even though that body was not perfect, like we saw earlier, we see through a glass darkly, but that glory would eventually fade away. And I think that's what we're looking at here. Um, so if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth. And the word remaineth here, I think, is uh, relating to those that are uh, those, those that remain, like eight souls on the ark. Noah remained. You know, it's interesting because when some of these groups, they were talking about one shall be taken and another left. For some reason, they, they're, they're coming up with the conclusion that the one taken is the believers. And, and the one that's left are the unsaved in the body. Well, the, the Bible talks about Noah being left, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Eight souls on the ark, uh, and Noah alone. Let me see if I can find that. God sent bridges that from the Old Testament, and we understand it spiritually with the New Testament, because he says, as it was in the days of Noah, right. so shall it be in the, at the end of the days. Right, so shall it be when the Son of Man is revealed. So we have to see that spiritually. There were e yeah, yeah, God is defining, I think, the wait, context. Wait, wait, we'll stop. They were eating and drinking uh, and knew not until the day that Noah came into the ark, uh, or and knew not until the flood came and took, took them all away. Likewise, two shall be in one bed. The one shall be taken. How can we miss that? To me... Lord willing, that, that's, that, that's very direct, that, that's very plain. That's how we compare the Bible with the Bible, right? God is making the distinction or, or point, pointing to the historical parable of the flood and then making it into something spiritual of the separation of wheat and tares. In the flood they were taken. In the flood of, the, of, of false gospels, the unsaved are taken, they're not left. The unsaved, they're taken. That goes, huh? The one that shall. That just goes to show you that God opened our eyes to it. We can be reading something in the Word of God, and and, and we can just read right over it and don't see it. Exactly. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So by the grace of God, we we, we see it, and I think the the guideline again, Lord willing, is to make sure that we are. We, 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 we find answers in the Bible. The Bible, like Mr. Camping used to say, is its own dictionary. And, and it is. Right. But unfortunately, I think many times we don't follow that, uh, that principle. We, we start to go on a tangent right. and then we start to you know, give meaning to words. Uh, I mean, I, I can think of a few examples, but we're not going to get into it right now. To start you know, assigning meanings and terms. Uh, but not looking at the Bible for the actual definition. But this, this I think, is a clear example, Lord willing, that God is comparing the flood of the days of Noah, and he refers to that spiritually as the, the flood of ungodly men. So the flood that comes on the church, on the body of Christ, it takes away those that are not uh, saved, the unsaved in the body. One shall be taken, two shall be in the field, one shall be taken, 
and the other left. The flood came and took them all away. And that is the same, uh, I think, theme that we can find throughout the rest of the Bible. Okay, so we, we look at... Um, so in verse 14, 2 Corinthians 3, But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. And you see why this is important, Lord willing, because it's God who has to open our understanding, our spiritual eyes, to remove the veil. Uh, yes. Looking at it here in the context of the Old Testament, but I think we can look at it uh, on a more uh, a wider scale as looking at the former versus the latter, right? The former being the Old Testament, uh, that we read about the, the former things are not remembered or come into mind. So the veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. So that I think is associating again the, uh, the church, the unsaved body, all the way through the Great Tribulation. It's only after the Tribulation that we, uh, clarity comes into the body and God begins the separation of wheat and tares. So, which is done away in Christ. Uh, you know, going back to this verse, looking at verse 14 again, look at it carefully. It says here that the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away you see if you read that casually you say okay well in christ it's done away so it's no it no longer exists you're not really associated but if you take all the phrases that talk about being taken away or to be done away to be destroyed well it is the church that the is church of wheat and tares that is being destroyed it is done away in christ it doesn't mean that the church is being saved it is done away in Christ. So even little things like that, I, I think every every word, every comma, I think every uh, every aspect uh, of the Bible is important, and and that's why, Lord willing, we we need to follow it carefully. Romans chapter eleven, verse twenty five. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part. So there it is again. I think the context here is talking about inch. Uh, Ancient Israel, blindness in part has happened to Israel, and we can relate that, I think, to the church, that is the corporate body, which is also Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So there it is again, the fullness of the Gentiles, the great multitude came out of great tribulation. No, not a multitude that was outside the church. They were outside the church. They were never in tribulation. Only the church comes under great tribulation, so that great multitude uh, has to be a reference to the to the uh, the body of Christ, the body of Christ coming together at a time of separation. So blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And verse fourteen, Second Corinthians one, as also ye have acknowledged us in part that we are. You are rejoicing even as ye also hours in the day of the Lord Jesus. So the church was in part, knowledge was in part, the body of Christ. And I think we can tie it together. The body of Christ is knowledge or the old knowledge, the former things. Uh, oh, the verse that I was trying to think of before, where there, uh, where there is prophecy, it shall be, how does that go? Help me out here, guys. Uh, whether there be whether there be prophecy, it shall vanish away. Something to that effect. Remember those verses. Whether there be um, whether there be knowledge. Okay, I think I'm getting the the, the spelling wrong here. That's in Second Corinthians uh, somewhere. Yeah, actually, first First Corinthians thirteen verse eight. Charity never faileth, but whether prophecies, they shall fail, whether tongues, they shall cease, whether knowledge, it shall vanish away. What knowledge is God talking about there? The former carnal knowledge. Ungodly knowledge, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when we read about uh, at the end of the days in the book of Daniel, knowledge shall be increased. It's not necessarily talking about uh, godly knowledge. Knowledge increasing, that's the knowledge of the wicked. That's that's the unsaved nature of the, the, the unsaved uh, uh, church, the unsaved body yeah, coming. Things from the yeah. Yeah. So they uh, they come with their own gospel. They have their own knowledge, their own Christ. Remember, Christ is knowledge, right? Knowledge is Christ. But right. everything that happens in tribulation and after tribulation is anti-Christ. And that's why I think we can see so many references uh, or similar references. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, that this, I think, is an interesting verse. Matter of fact, let me copy this here. I think it does go with these uh, with these verses looking at in part. So whether prophecies, they shall fail, whether tongues, they shall cease, whether knowledge, it shall vanish away. Well, that, that couldn't be talking about godly knowledge because heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So can you see how uh, it would be a reference to the church, the body of Christ, which is very much... Uh, Christ says, I am the, how's it go? Uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. So Christ is the head of the body. But the, how's that go? Let's see. Um, purges. That the, those that are not bringing fruits, uh, he removes from the branches, right? So they're no longer a part of the body. And, and that, I think, would take place in tribulation. That's the separation of wheat and tares. Okay, so I think that's... Let me see. One more verse. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 5. But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part. This, I think, is interesting also, because the idea of causing grief, I think, relates uh, spiritually to the Great Tribulation. If you're causing grief to the people of God, well, that's what happens, you know, when the church comes into the great tribulation and the two witnesses are killed, the unsaved in the body, uh, God uses, um, it is the fire from the mouth of the wicked. It is the word of God in the mouth of the, of the unsaved. So that's how they, they cause grief. And, but notice in, in the same sentence, um, uh, he hath not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. <clears throat> so I think, again, the the idea here is that there is that portion of the, uh, where the church comes into the great tribulation, and everything is in part. Knowledge is in part. The body is uh, seen through a glass darkly, and then face to face. Face to face. How do you come face to face with God? How does the church or the body of Christ come face to face with God? Through the unsealing of the Bible. Yeah, through the unsealing, the revelation of Christ. Right? And, that, and, and a lot of it, uh, when we read the book of Revelation, we I think we can see how it, it's really parabolic in nature, but it, it, it's a very real thing if you think about it. Because the rest of the world, or the unsaved, those who that have not the Spirit of God, then they would not be able to see things spiritually. They may see them see things intellectually. They may see things uh, on the surface. They may be very holy, or at least give an appearance, like the Bible says, an, an appearance of godliness. But in reality, unless God is truly uh, counting them as the sheep and being separated from the goats in the day of judgment or separation of wheat and tares that they're not going to see the, the 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 deeper spiritual meaning and it's not because we're more studious or we we study more or we do more uh, activities uh that that doesn't do anything it's only by the grace of god that these things have already these things have already been worked out uh, prior to the church even coming into the Great Tribulation. Okay, so, and then finally we have the, the one verse that I just mentioned, 1 Corinthians 13, 8. So whether there be a knowledge, it shall vanish away. So 
whenever you come across this verse in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 9, we know in part. I think it's safe to say, Lord willing, that it's not just, it's, I mean, it is talking about knowledge, but that knowledge is tied apparently altogether to the church. You, you really can't separate the two. So it is the church that is done away with. Because if the knowledge, look at it this way, if God came and took away the no, took away knowledge from the church, what is he also doing? He's also taking away the church. He's spiritually destroying them. He's spiritually destroying the church. So can you see how you really can't separate one from the other? So right. knowledge, the church that had been custodian of, of, of knowledge, custodian of the Bible, then if the church dies, well, knowledge also dies with it. They have their own knowledge, of course. They they want to be they want to be uh, identified with Christ, but in reality, they. I'm reading right here in Second Corinthians uh, eleven verse four. Mm -hmm. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom ye have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Well, there, yeah. Yeah. He that uh, cometh and preacheth another Jesus whom ye have not preached, or which ye have not received another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with. The, the word him is italicized there, so ye might bear well. Ye might well bear. And in the next verse says, For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I be rude, in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly uh, made manifest among you in all things. Did you want to say something about that verse, Michael? Did you have a... No, I just think it's interesting how he calls him a different Jesus. Right, right. Antichrist. <laughs> Antichrist. Right. So anything that is, uh, that is in opposition to God... Uh, and, and again, what I think is interesting is that a false prophet will never come and say, well, I'm a false prophet. They truly believe that they are serving God. Now, of course, I, I'm, I'm sure that there are those that that know maybe they have, uh, you know, they're scammers or they're trying to do it for their own personal or financial benefits. Uh, that, of course, you know, they, they, they know that. Uh, whether or not they understand that they're blinded by God and they, that they don't see their sin or the the fact that God is going to hold them accountable. That's another story. That's another matter. But for the most part, I think uh, a lot of people, when they say, thus saith the Lord, they feel like, you know, they go through the Bible and isolate uh, some verses here and there. And, and then they come up with, uh, with teaching and they may be very well convinced of these teachings. Look at uh, prior to May 21. Um, yeah. Uh, no, go ahead, Michael. Uh, Ezekiel 13, verse 3. Yeah, I was reading the same thing here. Mm -hmm. Let's say the Lord God, one well, unto the foolish prophets that follow their uh, own spirit and have mm -hmm. seen nothing. Yeah, and they say, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. So they're, they're coming with, with the Bible. And, and I think that that was also prevalent uh, in the Old Testament, you know, when God would. Uh, from time to time, send the prophet to Israel and the, to try and bring him back, uh, you know, from their uh, idolatry and so on. Then they probably a lot of uh, false prophets, those that are saying, I have dream, you know, they prophesy good things to Israel when the Bible was saying something different. And these are the kind of, uh, I think that's the scenario today, Lord willing, that we, we want to try to avoid. So ultimately, you know, it's not about, yeah, division in the world. Yeah, we, we see, you know, of course, the, the heart of man is desperately wicked. But I think it, it's very important or more important, Lord willing, that we identify with the word of God. We're preaching what is acceptable to God because that's been a theme throughout the Bible. 
it's always those that are going away from the Bible that God seems to focus on mostly, right? Those that are, they, they, they come with their own words and, and they, they truly somehow believe that they, they are preaching or they have the word of God. Matter of fact, they, so, they believe it so much that they are willing to uh, excommunicate you or, you know, cast you out, casting out the name of Christ from their company because they, they you know, not realizing that this is a, uh, how does the Bible put it, like a, a strong delusion. So it, it's not a light thing. Again, uh, you know, when we when we try to uh, try to be a spokesperson for for the Bible. Okay, so yeah, basically that was um, that was the the topic uh, earlier. You know, there's another area that I want to try to explore. Perhaps next time, God willing, is that the and I posted something in the chat the other day about uh, tittle, jot and tittle. And I, I may be seeing something similar, for example, in Matthew 5, verse 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. And what is heaven and earth spiritually pointing to? The church of wheat and tares, the yeah, corporate church. The body of Christ, the corporate church. The corporate body. That spiritually is, is referred to as heaven or, or the earth. So till heaven and earth pass, Remember, heaven and earth shall pass away. My word shall not pass away. Now look at in the same sentence, in the same verse, it says one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass. So in other words, a jot and tittle also will pass when all these things are fulfilled. So you see how many, uh, some people today, they they're, seem to be divided on, you know, what's a jot and what's a tittle and whether or not it's part of God's word. And Michael, I think you had the right post on the uh what is that ministry again uh, of gunther's ministry and looking at or oh, making reference to the fact that well jot and tittle i mean that that's that's just a tool right that we might use like a strong's reference but right. none of that is, is really in other words knowing more about it uh intellectually that doesn't bring salvation. That doesn't bring anyone closer to understanding the spiritual no, nature of the Bible. if you want to be a good Bible student, there's nothing wrong in it. Yeah. If you want to advance your Bible knowledge, but right. at the end of the day, that's all that this is a tool. It's all, you know, to think the, the idea that somehow God would use a uh, jot and tittle yeah. or um, uh, what is that? Um, the, the the ones that they're they're, they're talking about um, to think that God would be using these tools in other words the more you know about them then the more in line you are with with God's word no you know we, we I don't think we want to put ourselves in that situation um, let's see heaven and earth shall pass away Matthew 24:35 but my word shall not pass away so anytime you read i think lord willing about uh, a certain entity or a people passing away i think we can be certain lord willing that this is talking about the body of christ the church that comes under the judgments of god in tribulation and then post-tribulation and there are those today that are telling you or i don't know i think they're teaching well uh, Satan is no longer in charge. Christ is judging the world. Right? But he's not judging for the benefit of the world. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that, that's the understanding that I get. Well, he's not judging for the benefit of... Well, how is Christ judging the world? How would he be judging the world? He'd be putting the word of God in the mouth of the false prophet. Well, that's how, right. In other words, it would have to be working through a party, through a third party. So, but I think the way that some are looking at it, well, God is judging the world in a sense that he's bringing this calamity on this nation. Evil is going from nation to nation, whether it's earthquake, whether it's 
a pandemic, whether it's a war and, and things of that nature, that's how, well, that's interesting, but it doesn't line up with how God in the past has brought judgment. He brings judgment through a third party. And if we want to stick with the uh, historical parables and, and how God would always be focusing primarily, I mean, just look at the Old Testament. There's so many verses where God is focusing. He's talking about the object of judgment are the false prophets, the, those that are coming with the Word of God, those that have the Bible. So how is it that now all of a sudden we want to leave all of that behind or maybe just mention it in passing, you know, oh, God judged the church, but now he's judging the world and, and so on and so forth. So um, that, I think, would not be uh, in line with, with the rest of the Bible. So now looking at Luke 21, 32, barely I say unto you, this generation, what generation is God talking about? The, uh, this uh, the unsaved church. Exactly. You know, I, I can understand why some people might get frustrated. And someone uh, did say, I think Chris said it, uh, well, you know, it's always the church, the church. In other words, they, they feel like you have no clue about what the Bible is teaching. You have no understanding of the Bible. And so, therefore, everything is the ch you see the church in everything you do or everything you, you, you read. But it's not us doing it. I mean, how many times have we seen where God uses so many different words to point to one object, one entity, one person? Well, how is that so far-fetched? It's not far-fetched at all. As a matter of fact, that, that seems to be more in line with everything else. So this generation, right. the people, heaven and earth, the flower of the grass, these, I think, are uh, the, the beasts of the field, the fowls of the air. See, so many different ways that God can paint the same picture, but use different words. And that's why we can't come up with a cookie cutter to try to understand the Bible. See how some people say, well, this word is used over here, and therefore, if we use it over there, it must mean this. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have to. You have to look at not only the overall context, but how that context relates to the whole Bible. So we don't have a cookie cutter. I mean, it would be so easy for me to jot down, okay, well, this word then means this. So every time I see this word, I have to be thinking that uh, well, this is the meaning of the word. So they come to the conclusion that a Strong's reference, a certain number, gives meaning to the word. No. God paints a picture, and he could paint it and in so many different ways. So once we pick up the theme, I think, and we understand the ultimate goal of that, is that it's judgment and salvation. So that's why we try to find, Lord willing, throughout the whole Bible, is the language of judgment and salvation. And that judgment and salvation is typically, usually on the church, on the people of God itself. So when people, you know, sometimes... you. you we, Huh? I thought, it, I thought it was always on the church. Yeah, as far as I can see, it's always on the church. Now, we can, I think we can try to relate maybe morally or, you know, sometimes to things that are happening in our lives, but that's just a moral aspect of it. As a matter of fact, you know, when the Bible says that Christ spoke in parables, and without a parable spake he not, therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not. Well, that's why, again, I think it's important that we understand these things spiritually. And by spiritually, I mean that it has to do with the church, with the body of Christ, with the corporate body that comes into the great tribulation. The false prophets, those that are saying, you know, he saith, uh, they're, they're, you know, a famine, or how does the Bible put it? There shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes. That's talking about the false prophets that come in the name of Christ and they want to be identified with Christ. And, and that that's, again, I, I think that's very, very important because when you look at the world, yeah, you might see chaos and, and wars here and there, but those have always been around. Maybe it's magnified uh, and, and even the magnification of it, I think it is because 
it's representing, or at least it's it's a, a picture, an earthly picture of what's really happening spiritually. And I, I wanted to talk about this, you know, the war in Israel. I don't think it's 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 accidental. You know, we see such animosity, not towards those that are that are attacking Israel, but on the fact that Israel is even retaliating. So there's so much animosity against Israel. Do you think that that's important? Do you think that that sends a picture? I think it does, because that represents, I think, Lord willing, the spiritual condition of the body of Christ. There is animosity towards the elect, the body of Christ, in a time when God is separating wheat from tares. Now, you don't see it. You're not going to see it unless God gives you eyes to see it, and you see it through the Bible through the revelation, the unsealing of the Bible. But because it's happening in the world, you know, you can focus on that and then try to make that a prophecy of Scripture. But I think it's more of a shadow. It's a reflection of what's happening spiritually. I see a lot of church, uh, you know, people in church group in that event, uh, what's going on in Israel. They're trying to tie that with Bible prophecy. Of course, they're, they're going to do that. And then, I mean, you're not just talking about the church. You're talking about the post-church community, also the groups like E-Bible or, uh, yep. uh, you know, Gunther's Ministry, uh, like Bible Ministry. Everything that's happening outside in the world, physically, that's going on. Not, can, even if Israel wasn't, that wasn't going on in Israel, whatever's going out there in the world. You know the wars uh, over there, where they uh, uh, over there on the other side of the world. You know mm -hmm. whatever's going on out there. Some people focus on that yeah. instead of uh, not seeing by God's grace and mercy that it's all about the church, His okay. people, those that identify with Christ. You know now I don't know the I don't know uh, the outside world. You know those people out there that don't care about it. I don't know. You know. From one moment there, I was thinking, you know, because the outside, the people out there don't care about the word of God. They still have their gods. They have their gods in their own religion, right. which would be whatever it is that they love and enjoy, you know, uh, out there in that world. So at one moment there, I was saying, well, I don't know. I really don't know. I can't even go there. But it's all about uh, those that identify with Christ. But a lot of people... A lot of groups and a lot of people want to look at the outside world yeah. and don't care about the Lord and what's going on out there. They want to say, well, okay, this is happening because da 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 da. Because yeah. 24, because it said wars among wars and yeah. they're on the outside, okay? They're looking at the inside. They yeah. can't see the inside. God has to do that. Exactly. What is going on between the wheat and the tares spiritually? But the irony of it, I think, is uh, when you get a ministry like Family Radio before, <clears throat> that would tell you, first of all, well, the church, you know, the, the church is always trying to interpret things uh, literally, you know, the, the, the beast with seven heads and ten horns. And Mr. Camping used to shy away from that. He used to preach against that. So I don't know why today, you know, whether other ministries similar to Family Radio, they would be looking at things that are outside in the world. They're telling you you're not supposed to do it. But then that's what they're using yeah, as a basis. They're, they're using it as a basis for judgment. They believe that that's how that's how judgment is being carried out. But you, you you're constantly telling other people not to look out there for anything spiritual, right? So right. how do you how do you yeah. right? So how do you understand? Uh, you know, and and the thing is, is that even those that would uh, appear not to be spiritual, then maybe they're not even related to the church. They see the same thing. They, they come, you know, they may not admit it, but a lot of them, they come to the same conclusion. You watch the news, even people in the news, you know, they, they say, oh, yeah, well, you know, things are happening today that uh, I've, I've, I haven't seen in generations. Or, but they may not have the kind of faith that you have, but they're looking at it outwardly. They're looking at something... Uh, you know, that's happening in the world, the same way some of these ministries, they're doing the same thing. They're looking at it outwardly. And that's why, again, 
uh, Lord willing, I try to emphasize that we have to, when you talk about a date, no matter how many paths you might see in the Bible, but you have to test it with doctrine. If the doctrines don't line up, if they're not spiritual, if they're carnal, if they're pointing to things that are happening outwardly, in addition to, you know, some uh, numbers or patterns that you see in the Bible, well, you know, the, the likelihood is that those are not going to pan out either, right? And a good example that right. we've, we've talked about before was the, the, the five months of judgment. You know how many times people offered correction or other people try to say, well, that doesn't make any sense. What You know, you're teaching that there's going to be a five months of a literal uh, judgment on the world, earthquake, uh, you know, it's going to start at the international date line and go from nation to nation. And all of that is pure, it was purely carnal. So because, because it, you know, it wasn't being looked at spiritually and therefore the date would not lead to that. Then we were going by the Samoan Islands, their time zone. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, but we're, we're doing... That this is what the Lord is. This is what the word saying is. Or did, did anyone say that? You know. No, 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 nobody. I mean, the, my observation at the time, uh, whether it was 94 or 2011, in 2011, I was a little more cautious. My observation at the time was that people were simply just following the crowd, you know. they That's what they but wanted. They said God saying that, that, were they saying that heard the word of God? Well, yeah, I mean, the leaders, I, I'm sure they were, that's yeah. what they were saying, whether it's uh, Mr. Camping. So they, they were adding to the word of God then. Uh, well, yeah, I guess in a way you can say that because God did not say. Did not say it. And he didn't say it. Like he said the word. He right, right. The word. Bible, the Bible guaranteed it, right? The Bible guaranteed it. Well, that's saying, "Thus saith the Lord," and that's why Mr. Camping, I think, was very, very uh, broken and humble because he realized that, uh, I guess, in the end, that hey, you know, that's something that just doesn't smell right. You know, we we've missed date after date. And understanding after understanding, and therefore I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna sit on by the sideline and and cry out to the Lord for mercy, and I I don't want to be sitting in judgment directly, you know, at anyone unless you're not really judging a person or an institution, but you want to measure what they're teaching against what you believe the Bible to be showing. So yeah, they they if they were saying that and, and they truly believe. Matter of fact, they believed it so much that you know they you you'd be cast out of a cast away or, or you know put out of the synagogue, so to speak. Uh, you, you're not you can't be a part of the crowd if you didn't believe like they did. All right. right. Well, I didn't believe that part. I didn't believe that. Okay, the, there's going to be a rolling earthquake. I didn't believe that because I didn't see that. One little bit I did read, I didn't see anywhere in Matthew 24 where it said that, where it didn't say anything about no rolling earthquake. I didn't see that. Yeah. Now, I did say the, the Bible guarantees it, so I was added to the word of God. Right. I did say that a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the, the approach now is to say, well, you know, we just said we had a couple of things wrong. It's a big deal. You know, we, oh, no, it was we, a big deal. we we made correction. Now we have, uh, and, and every time someone says we, I mean, just go back and look at the doctrines that are being taught today. Okay, where do they all originate from? Family radio. Mm, no, beyond that. <clears throat> e Bible Fellowship, Chris McCann. As far as I can see, I mean, everything uh, is uh, originating from him. The Bible studies about 2033, uh, the... All about those kind of studies, ab yeah, yeah. Ab About Christ dying from the... Or maybe that's probably a, a spillover from Family Radio. Christ yeah. dying at the foundation of the world. Uh, you know, uh, still a rolling earthquake going from nation to nation. I mean, a lot of teaching today that's originating but then when when they talk about it they say we well we believe this or we see this or we see that no you see they they put these things in the minds of those that unfortunately maybe they don't have or god is not giving them the tools or the ability to discern certain things and so they just go right along you know especially when you tell them uh, you give them a date 
you know, timeline, something that they can measure so that now they can try to, you know, uh, plan their lives around around these uh, these issues, these dates. Many people uh, after May 21, they, they just fell away. Uh, apparently, they, they just oh, yeah. didn't, they didn't want to have anything to do with that anymore. But many of those people, you see what happens is, and, and this is, I guess, you can say personal. Many people, you, you don't know what in, what's in their heart. Our hearts are wicked by nature. And even though we don't realize that we do it sometimes, but because of our pride, we tend to weaponize the Bible. We weaponize God's word against our fellow man. Well, this is what the Bible says, and therefore, if you're not doing it, then then you're you're separate, then you know you're you're different than I am. Um, if you don't believe like I do, then even though you have no guarantee, I mean, how many people again, you know, prior to May twenty one, they were so certain that it was going to happen, but there was such a there's there there was such a hole, such a so, such an emptiness, such a shell that they weren't even you know they they. I guess at the time they were not even aware of it. So they were missing a whole lot of other things. But no, you got to follow along and go through. And then when you get to that date and nothing happens, it's almost like you can't accuse them of anything. You can't even bring it up. You can't even, because they'll, they're going to label you a, a, a scoffer, you know. <laughs> I mean, really? Someone is, is, is trying, you know, they're, they're changing uh, perhaps the lives of so many people by the doctrine, by the things that they're teaching. I mean, look at uh, Robert Fitzpatrick, who went downtown, you know, in, in Manhattan and has all these people just flocking over because he was giving them that that hope or that uh, that 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 teaching, which he didn't need, he didn't understand himself, apparently. Uh, so you're making such a big change in the lives of so many people. And then when it doesn't happen, if you, if you, if you try to bring it up, if you try to offer correction, no, no, we don't want that correction. We have our own correction. We're, we're going to go, you know, yeah, we made some errors here and, and we've, uh, we, we've been able to recover I don't know from where it. Did we come from because I, I, you know, I wasn't part, I wasn't part of that week. Yeah, well, if you listen carefully, I think to some of the uh, the, the the teachings. Because I, I cried out because I, I said I was a false prophet. No, you know, I, I said no. I was I was telling lies, and I was yeah. telling lies about the Lord. I didn't say, oh, well, I'm gonna, you know, no, I didn't say we. I I was just me. After a while, after a while, people uh, they're able to get back into the Bible and and go through a few verses and then put some additional uh, studies together and say, oh. There it is. You know, this is what we miss, and this is this is what the Bible is really teaching now. Therefore, now we know we're on the right track. Well, if you're on the right track, if you you know, it's easy to say now. Well, May twenty one was Judgment Day. If you truly believe that, then there's no reason in my mind that you would not be conclusive. You would not be uh, saying it definitively that. 2033 with all the time paths and everything that you see in front of you it has to be the conclusion of that because if you go beyond that or even if you don't get to that point at all well it just means that you had you really had no basis for saying that may 21 was judgment day other than the fact that well you know you we, we have to redeem ourselves somehow we 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 have to find closure uh and therefore and and you know, apparently it was a very, very difficult time for a lot of people. It was very embarrassing, you know, embarrassing yeah. to, to the family, to friends, people that we just abandoned and uh, thinking somehow that, you know, this would be the end. I never have to face these people again. And then you realize the following day you have to go back to work. Right. You know, you have to go back to your family and, and they may be nice about it. They might not even say anything, but you can you can sense it. But that's how that's how important it is. That that's how much of a big deal it is. I think when we're, you know, prophesying and then giving a, a certain time frame, and not measuring the time with the with the doctrine, 
and then going through that whole cycle again you know it just repeats itself and then if it doesn't happen then you go back to the drawing board and then you're not usually people that they don't for the most part i think i i guess i can't say that for everybody but some people they don't they don't really want correction and that's what i was saying earlier because of the pride sometimes we don't realize that when we're doing something just for the sake that just for the fact that hey I got to be right. You know, this is, I, I want to be in the forefront. I want to be in the spotlight. I want to be the one sharing or bringing the gospel. I want to be the one that has truth. And and so you begin to weaponize the Bible to those that are less fortunate, because if they're not understanding things, they can't study for themselves. So they, they begin to put their trust in you. Can you see why God would be very, very angry of those that he called hypocrites, of those that are that are they want to be identified with God, but they're not really taking the time to properly, I think, uh, you know, do the study so that they they understand things spiritually, because they're, they they impact so many different others, so many others. Now, whether or not those others uh, they may be just as sinful, they and you, you might you know have empathy or you feel sorry for them. Um, but God, ultimately, of course, God knows, you know, who he's going to be allowed to remain under a certain teaching and those that he's going to be able to bring out. I'm sorry, Margaret, you, you were saying something? Oh, no, just, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I was going to say something, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So... That's basically where we are. So going back, and, and we'll try to touch on this a little more, uh, maybe next time, God willing, on jot and tittle. Um, the vowel points. I think this somehow ties in to the vowel points that Michael uh, referenced in his post and in the uh, Bible Ministries International. So we'll see if there's anything there. Yeah, that... I see <clears throat> I seen Carl uh, uh, the, uh, He said he has nothing to do with either uh, with DMI or oh yeah, yeah. Bible is. I, I meant to say that. So basically, I guess in a way, he's just distanced himself from his own father, right? Yeah, it sounds like he distanced himself from his parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, but, the Word of God tells us, you know, everything is happening, and all we got to do is go to the Word. Father yeah. be against son, son be against father, mother be against daughter, daughter against yeah. you know, my familiar friend. I mean, I, I'm not faulting it, uh, you know, just because, I mean, if he's separated from his dad and as far as, as, far as teaching is concerned, nothing wrong with that. You know, if, he, if that's no, what he... Not, no, I'm it, sure he loves his father. He's, yeah. He's just, this, that division is what's coming out of the mouth. Right, of right. Each person. Exactly. So just the fact, I mean, just because it's your father doesn't mean you have to accept, you know, his teaching. Right. Although exactly. I don't see, I don't see a whole lot of difference. And that's, that, that's kind of strange, really. I don't see a whole lot of difference in, in terms of doctrine between e-Bible and uh, by uh, Bible Ministries uh, International, no, other, other than other than the vowel points, right? Yeah. The vowel points, yeah, because they, I think they're saying that the vowel points, they're saying is the word. I don't know. You know, I really don't understand. You know, I guess it's the vowel point supposed to be uh, the word of God or something like that. But I never heard Gunther say that. I mean, I never seen read anywhere where he said that. No, I, I, I mean, I, I, I can't. I, I remember vaguely some of the things that he was saying about it, and, and to me, the vowel points. I think he's trying to stress that uh, the vowel, the 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 vowel points, have to be put there by God because they they control sound in a language. So if you look at the English language, you have uh, vowels and consonants, uh, and each one of these they're responsible for pronouncing a word a certain way. So without the without the uh, the vowels or the consonants uh you know certain words might be uh, might be interpreted differently and i think I, I mean i could be wrong i think from from his perspective that that's what he's trying to portray uh and then by in doing so he's saying well vowels and consonants it you know man did not create that man does not create language all the different languages that you have in the world 
all these were were created by God, including the grammar. So if yes. you have if you have vowels and consonants, things that uh, regulate speech, well then of course they're 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 from God. You know, all right? They they have to be and, from and, God. And Gunther and his wife they 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 uh, you know they know Greek and all that. So and, and I think he can speak it. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I talked with him last week. I think right. it was last week. Right. Yeah, on the phone. Him and I had a long conversation. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. I, you know, so I don't know. But I believe that he loves his father and his mother. But he just don't. Uh, he's not in agreement with what he's saying about the. Well, if you have. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. They're, they're, they're kind of going at each other. But if you ever get a chance, maybe uh, give Gunther a track. I think. Uh, I beg your pardon? I said, if you ever, you know, speak with him, or if you have that kind of a, uh, uh, you know, friendship, maybe one day, you know, you might want to offer him the one of the uh, Babylon is Fallen tracks, and and see how uh, how he might respond to that. I think uh, Eric said Eric said anyway uh, that he had offered a track to him at one point, but uh, anyway, I got a, he's a, he's a brother Gunther sent me a tablet. And some of that I quite don't understand, you know, it, it, it has the vowel, some of the, uh, the section about the vowel points in it and mm -hmm. stuff he, like that. But I'm yeah. sorry, he yeah. had he had what? Uh, he sent me a booklet. They have a new booklet out. It's almost like Family Radio's booklet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you guys ever seen the forum booklet that they, they used to send out periodically. I think it was on a monthly basis or something. Yeah. Uh, Family Radio had a little booklet out. You know? I, I don't know why. Uh, I, I don't know why they're... they're going so hard to try to prove to the other about vowel points mm -hmm. when none of that like michael said uh is really going to bring anyone closer to truth oh no it's not no, the knowledge no. of the greek or the hebrew or the vowel points that's why i was saying oh. that you know if we have opportunity to at least point that out we don't have to say that specifically but i remember that uh, michael was saying Michael was saying that um, he offered a track to Chris, and Chris kind of glanced at it and said something like, I wouldn't be passing that stuff around, right? Something yeah, he says, I didn't read all that. You read a few passages of it, and uh, now I wouldn't be passing these out of my wheel. Isn't that interesting? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's really something because I, there are people out there that are in a position, in a position of uh, quote unquote. Uh, sharing the word of God, but then when somebody else want to share the word of God, and they have it on black and white, they don't want to. A lot of times they they don't want to hear what somebody else has to say. I don't know what is that's pride, isn't it? One person yes. that, that has called himself a, 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 a coming forth with the word of God. If you want to yeah. say teacher, say teacher. We're all teachers when we come to, when we yeah. come with the word of God. But you have one person over here, and then you have another person over here, and then this person here, and they don't want to hear what that person has to say. They come together, but neither one want to hear what the other person has to say. I right. can't understand that. Yeah. I can't understand why we, anyone can just stop and listen, okay? Maybe there's some things that you don't agree with. Right. Well, what do you do? You can just say, well, look, look uh, brother or sister, I don't, you know, we don't. You know, see that uh, we don't see eye to eye. We don't see the same thing. Yeah, That's we can't. We can't. We can't agree to disagree. Great. We can agree to disagree. I, I I understand if somebody's coming with a uh, with a dream or a vision or something totally out in left field. Uh, yeah, you don't want to have anything to do with that, or you don't. You know that that's. But if someone is coming, you know, just like you you know, you say, well, we we have to study the Bible a certain way, comparing scripture with with, with scripture. But if someone is coming with scripture. And they're showing things that are that that apparently that are contradicting your beliefs. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it might be kind of it might be wise, I think, to 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 take a look because you never know where truth is going to come from. Yeah, uh, that's who, right. Because God can use anyone right. to come with His word. So we we should listen. We should listen what the person has to say as far as what you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, now I, the thing of it is, is that if we just come in with the word of God only, yeah. Well, hey, that's it. But then when we start adding in, yeah. our coming in with our own, um, um, what we believe is saying, you know, coming, yeah, then that's where the problem starts. When, when we got to come up with our own, what, what this 
Yeah, no, yeah. They, 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 they seem to create uh, some kind of a bubble for themselves. The only thing that I think they, 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 they appear to be open to is the old teachings of Mr. Camping. Going back and falling back on family radio and Mr. Camping's teachings. That that's, to me, to some degree, they, they reach back to that for guidance. In, in no, the, we, in, should be, we, in, should be, we should be reaching into the Word of God. Yeah, and, I mean, look. And, and, and ask the Holy Spirit to, to guide us to truth. Right. And we should to one another because we don't know how God is working. We don't want to feel you like know? we're the only ones. We're the only ones that people should listen to. We're the only ones who have truth. And therefore, yeah, not, pride not, and arrogance. Yeah, not, and keep, and keep the commentary out of it. Now, if there's no commentary and we're just reading the Word of God. Right. Hey, what can anybody say? You'll go against the Word of God? Just, yeah. we're, we're just reading the word of God. Okay, brother, let's read this. Okay, well, all yeah. right, let's read it over here. But well, I, there's, that's okay. But once they put in, they put in their commentary what they believe the word of God is teaching. That's where the problem comes in. Yeah. And, and sometimes with some of these different, I haven't heard any women yet, but it's mainly men. Because I know there's some women out there, but I, you know, you know, we may not agree, but but we still love one another, you know. And and but it seems like the men. For some reason, they yeah. don't want to hear what the other person has to say. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I don't want to hear. It's only what I got to say. You can listen to me, but I don't want to listen to you. Yeah. You can read my. You can read my. And that, that's study. the, the yeah. I don't want to read yours. Yeah, well, that that that's unfortunate that's because right. there's there's so much uh, information out there. I mean, I can go through the internet and in different websites and. Looking at what I want to, I want to get that perspective. I want to see what other people are teaching. I think that's important. I think it's important too. You know, yeah. I, 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 I want to read somebody's studies. I, I want to read the track. I, I I've read yeah. some of the tracks that they've offered. You know, right, I right. see there's a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of uh, you know carnal things that are in there that are not you know uh, teachings from the Bible. But that's okay. I mean, I can. But at least I can see. The mindset, and not only that, but it also helps me to better uh, shape what it is that I'm trying to share with other people. You know? Exactly. And then we pray, we just pray for one another. That's it. Just pray, Lord, yeah. I pray that I'm, your perfect will be done, that you would bring us all the spiritual truth and spiritual understanding. We don't have to go around and say, hey, I got it, and I don't yeah. want to hear what you got to say. I don't want to read that, but you got to, you yeah. know. You know, I mean, you know, it, it, it's terrible because I've heard men come together and then, no, I don't want to. And I and I was talking to a sister. I said, you know what? This brother here said he don't want to hear what that brother has to say. And that brother said, you don't want to hear what that brother has to say or read their studies. You know, because a lot of they come over, you know, they have studies, but they don't want to read each other's studies. Right. I don't want to read your study. You know, I mean, anyway. I don't know. It's crazy. It's, yeah. it's just that, uh, but God is in control. I know that. But yeah. well, you know, we should be praying for one another, even if you don't agree. Like you said, Dad, to each, you know, you may not agree with certain things somebody's teaching, but still, but that, it don't hurt to see what they, where they're coming from or, or what they, or right. what they're trying to, um, right. you know, what right. they see in the Word of God, what they believe they see in the Word of God. Yeah, and because we pray. It, you come. All we can do is pray to God, you, because the Holy Spirit is the only one that can bring us through. I don't care what somebody write or what they say; that's not going to bring you spiritual truth. It's not gonna bring any of us to spiritual truth. It has to be the Holy Spirit working within us, guiding us, that bring and at the break re revealing truth to us, not man, but the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But I can't understand how come uh, uh, men can't come together and just like we're talking about. Well ultimately just, it's put all that pride, like brother Michael said, it's all pride. Oh, you're too prideful to read somebody else's yeah, yeah and, and that's unfortunate because that's what happens when you personalize the Bible. You make it a personal vendetta, you know. Right. You, you don't realize that you're working for God. You know, you're you're just a messenger. You're not exactly. the one. You're not the one trying to shape the scriptures and trying to get everybody else to conform to your understanding of it. Exactly. You want to make sure that you're you're doing the you know the the most that you can. And, and understanding it for yourself so that you can you right. can relay it properly. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah it, it's all. Uh, it's not the gospel is Christ. It's the gospel of Christ. It's right. Not the gospel of Margaret. It's not the gospel of Dante. Right. Or Chris McCann or Gunther or, yeah. or nobody or Family Radio. Right. Whatever. Right. 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 Right
So it's, we. It's, it's, it's right. It's not our gospel. We want to make sure yeah. that. You, yeah. It's we, his gospel, not ours. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're not. Yeah. Uh, Anyways. We're not in there for you. points. All right, guys. So thanks for coming by. So Lord willing, next All right, time. Have a good night. Have a good night. Have a blessed night right. and a blessed week. Take God care. Willing. You too. Bye bye. You as well. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night.